I stepped off the plane and I just thought, look, this is the place for us, you know. Oh, life is so much easier. I just feel like, yeah, it's an amazing privilege to, to live in this beautiful country. Because it's so worth it. It's just nice. It's freedom. Yes. Yeah, freedom. Security. Yeah, it's the security, the safety, knowing that the police work. Australia, a land of milk and honey. So, so it's so peaceful. Um, you feel a lot more relaxed, you know? I'm Dr. Shamanita Blanche, ex-corporate and academia girl, turned CEO and board member of several companies and mother of four little extraordinary kids. But it wasn't that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the know-how and the time to focus on designing and really going after the life that I so wanted to live. A life of freedom, of fairness and of being fair dinkum to who I really was and what I wanted to get out of this fleeting time that we have on Mother Earth. Fast forward to many lessons learned and moving halfway around the world to the most amazing country, you'll see the life that I now live. One that gives me more safety and freedom than I ever thought would be possible and that really only existed as a daydream while I was living in South Africa. I created Chamonix TV to give you true spot advice on how you can also live a life in this amazing country and so that you can see how another couple like us now live in Australia with four little kids here in Down Under and I'll be providing you with step by step strategies so that you can make your Aussie dream a reality too. If you're a keen future Aussie who's looking to create a life that excites you and offers you safety, freedom and opportunity, you have come to the right place my friend. Welcome aboard. Hi Sean, thank you so much for joining us all the way from a terrific Toowoomba today. How are you? Hey, Shimane, thanks for having me. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am very well, thank you. And I hear that you guys have been having wonderful weather over on that side of the big island. Yeah, yeah, it's been very good. Um, there's been quite a bit of rain that's come through, which has been needed in the area here. We've gone through a bit of a drought the last couple of years, I believe. Um, but I've also come to realize that this side of the world, when they talk about summer, they talk about hot or very hot. That's kind of the only temperature <laughs> you get yet, but it's, it's really nice, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so can you please enlighten our viewers where is Toowoomba and how big or how small it is? Um, I did a little bit of research so I can kind of put this into perspective for the for the folks that are listening into this and watching it. Um, so Toowoomba's on um, in a state called Queensland. It's close to Brisbane. Um, it's mm -hmm. probably the largest regional city that sort of goes towards the rural and then the outback sort of side of Queensland. Um, in terms of population, you're looking at about 200, 250,000 people. And that includes the sort of uh, surrounding farming areas and the smaller little mm -hmm. towns and things. Um, and in terms of square kilometers, you're looking at about double that of Bloemfontein. Okay, so that's a very decent size. It's a fair size, yeah. Look, I think in comparison to your larger cities like Pretoria, Cape Town, Johannesburg, it's a lot smaller, uh, a lot more laid back. Um, yeah, but it's got a bit of everything. I mean, there's a massive shopping center here, so the ladies love it. They've got everything that they need there. It's called Grand Central. Um, and you can go from one side of the city to the other side in like 15 minutes with peak hour traffic. So it's actually quite nice if you don't like traffic. So how has this changed your life going from the big smoke of Joburg to Toowoomba's little smoke? <laughs> Look, it's been a bit of an adaptation. I think um, I've, I've always been quite used to with my background and, and, and the working industries that I've been in. Everything's been hustle, bustle, chase, chase. Um, and, and coming back here has made, made me, I guess, reevaluate what it is that's priorities in my life. Um, and, I think, and I think the fact that there's such calm around here, so, so, it's so peaceful. Um, you feel a lot more relaxed, you know? That's, that's ignoring the crime element thing that we don't really have here anymore. <laughs> Okay, so 
the question I probably should have asked from the start is how mm. long have you been on the big island now? Because I believe it's not a very long time. No, no. So the, the local lingo, the local term for it is fresh off the boat. There's some funny joke that they've got where you row on with the boat and that's kind of how you get across the border. <laughs> um, we were quite fortunate to secure flights during COVID from South Africa. And we flew out. Our immigration flight was on the 24th of December. Um, we flew via Singapore. And then we landed in Brizzy on the 26th of December last year. So it was like a, a little bit of a late slash early, I don't know, but it's a Christmas gift. So I think it was quite a nice one for the family to have. Yeah. Wow. Yes, that is a very interesting Christmas present. And um, you have found your feed by now, I hope, because it's been about four months. Yeah, I think I think we were fortunate in that my wife was the one that was able to secure a role before we left South Africa. And it's thanks to her and her skill that we actually came over. Um, so we came over on a permanent residency visa, the subclass oh, 190. Yeah, very so we, handy. We, we, we bound to Queensland for the first two years, but we've got permanent residency. So we could you know do what we like here pretty much mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's within the police thresholds. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, she, she pretty much from the from the outset um, was able to start working. There was a couple of hoops we needed to jump through, you know, with her being a medical practitioner. There's obviously quite a bit of red tape. They just need to make sure that whoever's coming across is you know registered and following the right protocols um but yeah for me it's been an interesting journey um I, I left one of the banks that i was working with in south africa in in a relatively senior role um coming across without unrealistic expectations i mean it is covid you are coming to a first world country so there's obviously a lot of talent around yeah. um so i came across thinking you know it'll probably take three to four months i'll walk into a junior role hopefully and it hasn't happened <laughs> so um but as what, you say yeah, there are so at, many things playing in at, at this point in time it's uh, it's so difficult to make a judgment on whether it's because of COVID or because mm, of you know the fact that you're fresh off the boat as you say or because it's just you know jobs don't just land in your in in your squid in your lap so yeah, sometimes yeah. these things take time mm. and maybe sometimes it's a it's, it's an opportunity for you to reconnect or spend some more time with your beautiful daughter, I believe. You've got a three-year-old? Mm, mm, yes, Zoe's turning three now in May. Gorgeous. So you've been looking for work, I understand. And can you give us an idea of what you've been do doing in terms of trying to find work? Mm, so what I've, what I've come to realize is that Australia is very much um, network-based, I guess. Um, so tools like LinkedIn is something that is, that is very powerful in Australia. Um, a lot of your potential employers, those that you start looking, um, looking through and applying for roles with, they definitely check you out first on LinkedIn before they consider giving you a call. Um, so if there's any tips that I'd give, um, aside from the formats and, 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 the, and, the, and the terminology that's slightly different here, LinkedIn is definitely something that you must put some focus on. So if you've, if you've got some background on it, awesome, use it. Otherwise, use sites like Seek or Indeed. Um, but LinkedIn really is a very powerful tool. Um, I didn't realize what all you could do with it until I actually upgraded to the premium package and guys started coaching me through it. So definitely very, very good to do that. Um, and, and, I, and I guess what I've started doing here too is, you know, because I don't really have an Australian working background, um, people don't really know who I am. And it's quite difficult to place someone if you don't know if they can actually, you know, work in Australia, I guess, um, you know. So, um, you know, I've, I've been quite proactive in, in, in that networking through contacting institutions that I'd like to work with, you know, telephonically, emails, before applying, just getting some more background it's something that gives you a slight edge because if a recruiter is looking at a resume versus someone that they've actually spoken to a bit, it makes it a bit more personal. So there's that mm. touch point that, that definitely helps. Um, and, and I've seen that, you know, since I've been doing that, there's been a lot more traction on, on more activity on, um, on the applications going through. And you know, of course, that Tuma is not the biggest banking city in Australia. <laughs> so <laughs> that does make a little bit of a difference um, mm. in terms of your possibilities but opportunities yeah yeah the opportunities but with these days with COVID you never know you could potentially land a job that might be based in Sydney and because everybody because my husband is in banking and mm. I know how it's changed for them they used to be CBD based and you go to the shop yeah. every day I say the shop yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> the head yeah. office yeah it's in the head office 
And now they work from home half the time. And that's just how it is because mm. it's actually better for, they found that it's better for head office as well in terms of the setup, because you've got mm. to have your one and a half meter, whatever, between people mm. that they can now only have half the people that they could have in the past. And so they need some of the people to work from home some days and others to you know, go into the office. So there might be an opportunity that goes along with this. Who knows? Yeah. Hang in there would be my advice to you. But do you to mind keep, sharing? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So to keep my mind off of and while I'm focusing on that and finding work, what I have been able to do is get some uh, casual work. So there is a lot of that around. Um, and, and if you're willing to, you know, bite the bullets and do whatever, it, whatever is necessary, which... Mm. You know, we, we're living in those times. I mean, COVID has definitely thrown things topsy-turvy. Uh, um, so, so you do what's necessary. And I think, I think if you're willing to take that, uh, um, that leap, you know, that leap of faith, you know, uh, opportunities will definitely come down, down the line. Um, but you do what's necessary. I mean, you, you, you struggle for so long to get to Australia, you know, leaving South Africa. When you get here, you're so happy to be here. You know, whatever it is that you need to do, you do. It's just one of those things. Exactly, Sean. And you know how many times we've seen it where people go, shall we say, down a step or two, mm. because that's the only job that they could find at that specific point in time. And then while they're in that job, they need other people, doors open for them, and they build on their Australian CV, like res references. Mm. And so it's so much easier to apply for the second or the third job once you've been in Australia, even mm. though the first job means that you might need to go a step or two downwards. And that's a very important thing that you're experiencing and also mm. to share with our folks watching, as you're saying, because it, you, know, you are coming to a new country. Australia is not rolling out the red carpet for you and saying, oh, we are so glad that you're here now. <laughs> it's not like that at all. No, you know, mm. Australia is a strong country, strong economy. They've got a lot of people here who are also working and, and a lot of them looking for work. Mm. There, there are many jobs available, but they're not necessarily the jobs that might be in your industry, mm. as, as you found out now. Um, so, Sean, t tell us a little bit about your wife's process of applying for her job and how did that come about and when did you guys start considering coming to Australia? Cool. Um, I guess that's probably the question at the top of mind for a lot of people, you know. Um, so I guess maybe just to start off at the beginning, um, we, we had been thinking of Canada and Australia, um, not really New Zealand. I don't know why that never featured, but those were things that we were talking about, but it's kind of like a pop dream, you know, it's something you think mm -hmm. of, but you don't really, you know, go for it. Um, and just after Zoe was born, our little daughter, um, my wife went back to work and there was one or two things that took place. And um, a, an eldest gentleman that was a, a patient of hers, um, they were chatting and Australia came up in the discussion. Um, and she mentioned, you know, that we were looking at Canada, considering Australia, but not really doing anything about it. And he said, well, my son is in Australia and he's looking for an associate. And, and that's kind of how it started. And that was back in 2018. So uh, one of their requirements was, um, you know, for my wife to fly over um, to treat. So it's quite an expensive interview. But, you know, nonetheless, she needs to come and see what it's all about too. So 2018, November, she got onto a flight, flew through to Brisbane all by herself. Um, so this is just after labor and, you know, recovering and that. So a big feat for her. Um, came through, treated them, they loved her, they got on and connected really well. And they said, right, you can start whenever you've got your visa. Um, so she came back and it was probably a week or two of us talking about it. And we, we just made the decision and said, right, we, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. um, now, being a chiropractor, you obviously need to write board exams. Um, and uh, those board exams happen three times a year, at different locations around the world. Um, and from what I understand, chiropractic examinations in, in the board exams in Australia is the hardest or the toughest that you get globally. Um, and um, well, we were so amped and excited to get this thing done that on, in February, she flew over and <laughs> wrote the board exams. Uh, she flew over to Sydney. So she had three months to re re relearn six years worth of chiropractic. Oh, wow. You know, what a education. brave woman. Wow. She's incredible. Yeah. 
So um, she flew over, she passed the first time, only 20% do that, um, which is another amazing thing. Um, she had tonsillitis at the time too. She was here by herself. <laughs> um, oh, it's the big wow. leg. Yeah, it was, you know, but there's, there's sacrifices that one makes. And I just think the big man upstairs was obviously just opening the doors mm. up, you know. Um, oh, most so, definitely. Wow. Yeah, so she wrote the exams, came back. Um, I was quite fortunate that um, one or two of my friends and, and, and old work colleagues that I'd worked with um, at the bank that I was with um, had gone through the process. One used an agent and the other one didn't. Um, so I thought I'll take a chance and not use an agent. Um, you know, on the agent topic, I guess it depends on what your, your, your level of comfort is when it comes to, to researching, because it is quite a technical process. Um, and, and especially now things keep changing. You know, you may want to consider um, an agent, um, but, but if you do your due diligence, it's quite, you know, it's quite possible that you could do it by yourself. Mm. Um, so we did that, you know, I, I did some research, the guys gave me a couple of tips, we obviously ad ad adapted it to the profession specific that we're looking for. Um, we first applied for the 180, that didn't come through, it was a 185, I can't remember now, <laughs> one of the two, um, that didn't come through, we waited and waited, um, and that was early, early 2019, um, just after we got the, uh, um, the results that my wife had passed. Um, then someone from one of the governing authorities here in Queensland said, listen, why don't you just submit a 190 um, and, and we'll see if we can support you through this. And again, things just fell into place. Um, yeah, and I think uh, 9th of October 2019, we lodged and then we waited. January 2020, we sold our properties, moved into an Airbnb thinking in a couple of months time, you know, we're going to be in sunny, sunny Australia and then COVID it. So it's been, it's been an interesting journey. Um, but I think all of it's kind of prepared you for, for, for what's coming. Um, yeah. So what did you do from January last year till December when you came over? Where did you live and was your wife still working in her job that she had then? Yes, yes. Um, so both of us were still working. Wife was still working um, in, in her primary practice. She had sold her, her secondary practice, a little business that we'd started up. Um, I was still working at the bank, um, and in the back of my mind, I knew that there was a restructuring that was happening. I just didn't know when that was going to actually materialize. And again, everything just fell into place. And, you know, just after the visa grant came through, which was the 3rd of November last year, mm -hmm. um, the announcement of the restructure came through. I had some time to, you know, make a decision on whether I want to take on a role that they were actually offering me. Um, or to take a package and leave. And obviously with a currency exchange, I thought package is going to help us get set up. So let's do that. So we lived in an Airbnb. We managed to find one. The, the lady was an amazing woman, um, close to retirement. So we obviously helped a lot with, you know, adding a bit of, uh, um, a bit of padding, I guess, to the retirement fund that she was trying to build. Um, and it was incredible. I mean, we obviously had to sell all of our goods. So moving into an Airbnb, which was furnished, it just, you know, we just, it was a, uh, a mutually beneficial agreement, I guess. Mm. And we had anticipated a few months only, and it took a lot longer. We were both happy, you know, from other side to to continue with a with a stay there. That was in Joburg as well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. In in a little uh, suburb called Linden. Oh yeah, yeah, no yeah. Linden. Yeah. And and Sean, how hard or easy was it for you guys to get a flight? Yeah, that was interesting. Um, so, so there's a woman that we reached out to. She's based in Cape Town. Um, very good friends of ours that are now in Adelaide also managed to secure flights throughout COVID. They first tried their own approach, tried to get exemptions, et cetera. And um, it's proved to be quite challenging to go that route. Um, and this woman, she's incredibly talented. Um, um, I don't know if I can say this, but if you want to, you can reach out to me. I'm willing to share details. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do so uh, offline. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, um, but yeah, she, she managed to secure the flight. She's the one that's been, um, you know, organizing how you travel from which city to, you know, which country to country, mm. um, whether you need the COVID tests or not. And, um, yeah, she's, she's been very, very successful during COVID, being able to, you know, help people, you know, fulfill what their dreams are. Mm, that's great. Yeah. And so it was okay for you to get the first, well, I'll say the first flight. Did you get on the first flight that you thought you were going to get on? Because we've yes. heard some, some things about people booking a flight and then it gets postponed and then they get dropped off the list and so mm. on and so on. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I think this woman was really talented. So she was able to, I think during that time, things went as chaotic because, you know, the peak had been reached and we started going mm. down with COVID globally, to some extent, at least in, in most of the countries. Um, so the restrictions weren't as intense 
I guess. Um, so she was able to procure one from Johannesburg to Singapore and then from Singapore through to Brisbane. Oh. Um, but the flights were incredibly expensive. I mean, we were paying pretty much business class prices for, for economy seats. Wow. Um, yeah, and I think uh, there was there was no bumping off lists except for the connecting flight from Singapore to Brisbane. They, they moved us uh, to a later flight. And that's purely mm-hmm. because um, the airline that we flew with um, decided they're going to support Australia with the repatriation exercise that they're busy with for their for the, for the Australians that are stuck around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but no extra costs. Uh, the airline even covered, for some reason, they were able to help us out and they even covered the, 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 the layover hotel for us. Um, so, so we were quite happy. Well, at the business class prices you were paying, you would hope so. But that's, yeah, that's something else. Yeah, but, uh, we, yeah. Okay, so you made it to Brisbane and then obviously you had to do the fabulous 14 days in quarantine. Mm-hmm. How did that map out for you? Look, I think um, I've, I've been quite fortunate and, and, and I've married up in life. <laughs> so, so my wife has done a lot of, you know, she'd done a lot of pre-planning on, you know, useful tips and tools and, you know, little DIY thing is that a little one can get her hands dirty with. Um, and uh, yeah, she, she managed to prepare a bit of a plan, you know, um, that we could work according to while in, in quarantine it wasn't easy i mean um having a toddler mm-hmm. in a normal day is is, is interesting it keeps you on your toes when being confined to a space for you know for for two weeks um where you can't leave um, we we only had one bedroom um, but it was a nice little suite i guess because it was a, it had a little lounge slash kitchenette um mm-hmm. and then a bedroom on the other side with like an entrance wall thing so that we had a bit of space i mean other guys have had it a lot worse than we have um yeah and, and i think we just we did what we could and um, we obviously had to use a bit of screen time on the little one which isn't the greatest but sometimes you do what you need to do i'm um, so surprised my three-year-old is learning how, all, all the maths that you need from a screen at this point in time and i'm like well if this is what the ipad is letting my son do then he's going to have more ipad because he's like going three plus four is seven and i'm like what wow. where did you learn that and it's just off uh, number blocks by the way it's called so if okay. you have that on youtube go and have a look yeah. i love it <laughs> yeah so sean where are you guys living now did you are you renting or are you an airbnb and how difficult or easy was it for you to get space into Wumba to, to stay at yeah that's a very good question that so so i think i think again we were really really fortunate in that the people that my wife is working for um also ex sapphires so so they've been in australia now for about 13 years, I think it is. Um, they did a lot of on the ground sort of work for us and went and, you know, inspected a whole lot of properties um, for us to rent so that, um, you know, we, we could actually just move into a place when we land. And we were, again, through through luck, I don't know, coincidence, the man upstairs, um, we were able to secure a rental from South Africa, which is quite, quite difficult to do uh, yes. because, again, you don't have references or any of that sort of stuff. Um, but they've got a way around that. So they've, they've got a system that they use and, and they, you know, if you're a property owner, I guess that's a, a bit of a caveat. Um, but they do call out to employers. They do call out to, um, you know, f- good friends. They can give character references and those sorts of things. So it's possible. It's definitely doable. Yeah. Um, moving into an Airbnb currently is incredibly expensive. So, you know, be prepared for something like that. Um, mm. the, the, the costs that you're looking at definitely is Airbnb um and then of course the quarantine if, if quarantine is still a requirement um our hotel bill was uh, um uh, was just shy of four thousand dollars for the two weeks um which is quite a steep price to pay um but yeah that was for a family of two adults and, and a little one yeah so we're staying in Toowoomba um it's a beautiful little place in fact this is probably one of the neatest and more modern looking places we've ever lived in you know even from what it is that we've owned um uh, three bed, two bath. We're paying about three hundred and eighty dollars a week here, mm-hmm. uh, which which is actually a fair a fair rate. But having said that, um, rental is is quite a challenging market at the moment, from what I've heard, uh, especially in the Queensland area, um, because the supply isn't isn't as much in favour of what the demand is. The demand far outweighs the supply. So where we are at the moment, we've got about a 07 percent um, supply available. So obviously, you know it's uh, it's a tough market to get into if you're trying to find a place. Yeah. Same, same here in Perth. People are struggling to find rentals. Yeah. Um, and I'm a counselor at one of the largest city municipalities here in Perth. And okay. an interesting thing is that we have 
citizenship ceremonies every month. And we have one this month that's got two ceremonies, the one after like two weeks apart, because mm -hmm. with COVID, they don't want to have too many people in one room. But we have more than 100 people per ceremony every month, um, every at every ceremony, every month. And it just shows you how many new citizens wow. we get into Australia. And this is just my council. I mean, we're you know one of 150 in Australia. There's not, they're not all as big as my council, yeah, but yeah. wow, it, at least two 250 odd or so new citizens every month that register in in our city. So that's why there is not enough supply in terms of places to to live in because mm. we still keep australia still keeps getting people in from overseas like you guys have just moved here people think the borders are closed it's not you know defined closed because it's maybe closed for tourism but it's certainly not closed for skilled people like you have come in and, and shown that it is possible to still mm. come in and your visas yeah. were assessed amidst all of this yeah. Sean, can you tell me so far, how have you found settling in and what's been the, the, the best thing and the most difficult thing for you so far? <laughs> um, okay, so the best thing I must say is probably the people here, um, whether it's, you know, fellow South Africans um, or, or, or Aussies as well really really nice people here so you know what it is that you're hoping it would be because i've never been in australia before the first day i set, set foot on australian soil was when we immigrated when we landed um so i've never been here before um and, and it's all and more of what i expected um so they make you feel at home there's no I mean, there's, there's, there's no, um, what's the words? I can't even think of the words now. I don't know, you really feel welcome, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say, you know, um, irrespective of your background or whatever the case is. Um, the worst part, I guess, is not really so bad. Um, aside from the work thing, you know, um, this is something that's a given. It's a calculated risk when you immigrate anyway. So it's not, it's not an unknown. Um, I guess the, the, the hardest thing has really just been, um, I guess, aside from leaving friends and family and everything that you know and understand and was kind of part of your life, if you're, a, you know, very social, um, that's probably challenging, but I mean, mm -hmm. you get your social media and, you know, there, there's so many, so much technology out these days, you know, mm -hmm. that, that you can mm -hmm. remain connected that way. Um, but simple things. And I, and I guess this isn't really something that you think of, but when you go shopping, you know, the, the labels of the food, the brands, it's not something you think of, but it's actually quite challenging adapting and integrating that way. Um, we've also seen the way they lay the shops out, you know, it doesn't, doesn't flow the same way as it does in South Africa with how they, how they put the products together. It's, it's, it's kind of different on that front. Um, and then I guess the normal things like the, the accents, you know, you're trying to understand what the guys are saying. Um, there is a slightly different culture, here, especially when it comes through to the way things are done. It's very process focused and you don't deviate from that. So it's just adapting to that, you know. You've got to tick um, the boxes, remember. It's yeah. a box ticking yeah. <laughs> red, red type society. This. Yeah. And, and there's no way around that. Don't ask other questions. This is what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> no, but it's been good. I think. I think it's probably then just the communication thing because I, I remember quite well just after quarantine we went into this shopping center and we were looking for Target, um, but they call it Target. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I walked into this mall and there's this very uh, uh, um, welcoming little gluten-free mini donut stand thing in the middle and there's lovely smells coming across and I'm looking at the signs you know down the alleyways where's the shop and and the guy says to me what you hunting. So I had a first sudden think, what's this guy saying? And then I realized, you know, he's actually asking, what am I looking for? So I said, he's Target. He's trying to help you, yeah. Yeah. And, and then he said, then I said, Target. And he looked at me, he says, what? I said, Target. He's like, ah, Target. <laughs> that way. <laughs> um, so it's really just that adaptation. And look, it's fun. I think that's the thing is it's really learning. And, and the Aussie accent is actually a funny accent. It's a cool one. I, I enjoy it, but it's a funny accent too. So you know, although these little things can become a bit of a block, it's actually, I laugh at it because it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's new and, and um, yeah, it's a great experience. You should actually, well, I'm glad we're recording you now because we, we should, <laughs> we should play this back to you in five years time. 
I bet you your accent will change. Change, so yeah. So funny, Sean. I've been here 16 years, and obviously, I don't know what I sound like to you, but to me, I just, you know, I just speak whatever it is that my brain pr produces out of my mouth. And I keep on getting these comments from people like, what is she trying to be? Is she trying to be South African or Aussie or what's that? You know, what's the mix that she's speaking? And I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't sound like an accent yeah. to myself. I just, you know, I'm so used yeah. to what I'm saying. Yeah. But apparently I'm no more a South African accent, nor am I a proper Australian accent. So I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. So you sort of become in a way this no man's land kind of setup, which I guess for people like you and I who have migrated as the first one in for the generations, mm -mm. there will always be an aspect of that somewhere. There's only women in bus, as we say. Yes. yes, know that one. yes. And they call us a blowing. If you're, you know, <laughs> from from somewhere you're coming to Australia, you're a blowing. Blow yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine, you know, because I want to say most of Australia, maybe not most, but so many people in Australia are blowings, and it's just a matter of which generation of a blowing are you, you know, because somebody, mm. the first one came on a boat, and then everybody after them, there were so many else, uh, others of them as well. Yeah. Um, but the way that you're you're having you're thinking about it. I can hear and the way that you're approaching your settling in and your new life in Australia is with the right mindset. You know, you're you're giving it a go and you're saying it's not going to be the easiest thing, but we're out here trying and reaching out to people. And that's an important thing as well. Once your daughter starts going to school, because I, I don't know, is she in school? I mean, mm, daycare kin, or not? Is kin, she in kindy? It's kindy, kindy, <laughs> kindy. And once she gets to a bit more of a, a higher level of school, like primary school yeah. age, there will be many opportunities to start making friends with other parents. And that's when things get a little bit easier in that regard. And also when you'll when you'll get a job there will be more people that you'll meet through work. And then, you mm. know, those people introduce you to other people then and, mm. and so on and so on. So, mm. yeah, no, I think you guys are on the right track. And how does your wife feel? How does she, how she settle in with her new job? Yeah, I think, I think um, the business model in, in what it is that she's moved over to is very much the same as what it is that she had back in South Africa, except that um, I, I actually feel like she's in a better place. Um, not just because of country, um, you know, being a, a chiropractor and a medical practitioner in private practice, you, you, you earn what you see, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, so in South Africa, she was very much um, dependent on the, the patient number, um, you know, for the care that she was giving. Where here, they've, you know, they've given her a, a fixed income for a certain time period, which definitely helps with the integration, absolutely does. Um, very family focused, very close, you know, the community itself is like that too. I mean, these guys traveling from, I mean, they'll travel from wherever they stay in some farm, they'll stay over in Toowoomba that night after seeing her and then travel back the next day. Like that's, that's how things are done around you in this, in this area. Um, but she's loving it. She really is. Um, obviously, you know, immigration is tough on relationships. So, you know, you need to guide yourself there and make sure that you prioritize each other too. Um, but she's enjoying it, especially the safety elements. I mean, I get in, go jogging any time of day, morning, night, doesn't matter what, sun up, sun down, and you don't have to worry about anything. You're not looking over your back, you know. You, you go to the shop, you forget the door unlocked in the front, and, and nothing happens. And I guess that, especially for women, because, you know, I was held in at gunpoint four times in South Africa before, before we moved over. And fortunately, it was just me that was faced with that. Um, and I wouldn't wish it on, on, on my worst enemy, you know. But, but knowing that that isn't something that we'd be exposed to here, um, I guess that, that definitely makes the whole experience completely different. Yeah. And I guess oh. that's why there's this calm around you too. So she's loving it. She really is. Oh, wow. Four times. Anyway, wow. I still get nightmares and I was almost at gunpoint once. <laughs> so it's um, terrible. anyway, um, well, I'm so glad that you guys have made it over to Australia and welcome Thank to you. this new family that you're exploring now. Thank and you. if you ever come over to Perth, hit me up and we'll grab a coffee or a beer or anything in between that you'd be interested in. And our kids can have a big play date. <laughs> That's it. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks much. so much for sharing your story, Sean. It's been really yeah. fascinating hearing it. And I definitely want to catch up with you in another 
year or two's time so that we can see and hear from you how you you know how things have progressed for you if that's okay that sounds great thank you very much thank you for your time and for the opportunity to share my story it's my pleasure enjoy your Toowoomba day thanks Shamane cheers bye bye all right so thank you so much for joining me today if you had fun please remember to hit that subscribe button and then it'll make sure that you never miss a thing I'll see you same time and same place next week. Bye for now.